Welcome to the Synchro Masterclass. This is going to show scheduling in Synchro. As you can see there is the standard 4D Synchro screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close down the 3D window. And now that looks like uh, any sort of scheduling software. You see at the top there there's the default columns. We've got the ID, name, duration, start and finish. I'm just going to pull those across a touch. Just give me a little bit more real estate. And then if I go into tools options and I open up general and then time display, you can see the way we've got the time display, we've got short date format at the moment. It gives a little sample underneath there of how it's going to look. I can change the long date format like that if I wanted to, or I can add the display the time of day on there as well. I normally have it on short date formats because it's nice and neat like that. Then go to duration display format. Again, there's a sample of it there. Uh, concise will be this sort of simple way of looking at it. You can change the verbose, and that will say days, hours, minutes on there. I'll change it back to that. You can see in the drop down, you can schedule by days, hours, days, hours, minutes, weeks, days, months, weeks, and days there. Okay, if I move down and open up the Gantt chart, and then rescheduling. I'm going to snap to hours there. We're going to have the automatic rescheduling enabled to start off with. Okay. And then if we go down and I open up defaults for new objects, I'm going to select task. Any new task that I want to create in Synchro, I can choose which task constraints it's got and I'm going to have those to start as soon as possible there. So I'm going to have that selected. And you can see in task ID that it will actually create an ID number there, which we can have, we can state a prefix, a suffix, and the increment of it. That can be signed automatically. So that's kind of set off there to get us going to start the scheduling. Okay. Now we can view the Gantt chart. If we go to view and then Gantt mode and work breakdown structure or you can apply activity codes or you can just have a list. I'm going to do work breakdown structure to start off with. We've got the default columns at the top there. We can actually add our own custom columns. If I move my cursor into where the blue area is, I'm going to right click and then select custom columns. And you can see all the available columns that we can use there. I'm just going to put across the predecessors, so I just select it and then select this single arrow and it pops it into the selected column there and I'll do successors as well. When I select OK, and if I just move this across a touch, we need, I can see I've got a predecessors column and the successors column as well. You can put any of the other options such as early start, etc. You just need to select it and then it pops in a new one in there. Okay. Also, the um, when we come to write a schedule out, you can use uh, the calendars. So if we go to the navigator and select calendars, we've got a, a project calendar default which you'll use, or you can add your own. So if I add my own in here, I just right click and then add. We call that one synchro. Make sure it's selected. I'm going to come down into general and I can change this if I wanted to. So the way you change it, you go to the calendar, just right click, I can edit the day type and I could change that working date, for example, to 8 till 6 o'clock. You can put uh, you can put breaks in there. Uh, if I wanted to do a 24 hour calendar, which I'll do now, I'll set this that to 0 or well, 12 o'clock and set this to 1 minute to 12. And then if I just put this, push this little arrow up, it changes it into a 24 hour day with one day underneath there. I'm just going to cancel that and just do it again. Is it a day type? 
I'll just change that to 8 o'clock start. Okay. So when I come to create a task, all I need to do is if I just write in this column, in the name column there, so if I say construction, and enter, and it automatically does a start date and today's date there, and a one day duration. I wanted to create a child underneath that, I can go up to the icon at the top, which is this square box with a little arrow on, and select the drop down, and select as child, and that puts a task underneath, if I rename that one, substructure, and then I'm going to have some subtasks of the substructure, Again, I go up to this icon and select as child, and I can call that one piling. Again, I'm going to put one underneath that, and I could say pile area one. Once you create task underneath that, uh, I can either select below or I can select the actual cell of the name. If you go into the bottom right hand corner, you can see this little grey box turns into cross there. Hold down the left button and I can drag this down and it creates those tasks underneath one, two, three, four, five. I just need to indent them. So if I select the first one, hold down the shift, select the last one, select indent, and I'm just going to push it across till it's the same level as pile area one. Change the uh, duration of these. I can just you can either just change it. I can just select and type. So if I say two days for that, or I can select that there, and I can press F2, and that allows me to edit, say three days for that. Again, if I wanted to, I can just go into the bottom right hand corner and drag that down like that. Okay, now if you want to link these tasks, first of all I'm just going to check which type of link we've got and we've got finished to start there. So whatever's in this uh, drop down box there is what we're going to use. Uh, the calendar of use of these, you notice is project calendar there, which if you go into general, I'm, I've selected that task and you can see calendar is project calendar there. Select the first one and then select the pile area 5 and then select link tasks and chain which is this icon gives us a preview of what's happening you can see this is uh, scheduling automatically at the moment if you're happy with that there I'm going to select apply to all and then select OK and you can see there it's linked in, in the chain like that there if we wanted to put a delay on say pile area 1 I select the task Go to links, find the successor, this one, select it, move down, and I've got a positive delay. If I wanted to put a delay of three days, I'll just add that amount in there. As you to reschedule the task, I can select OK, and you can see there's the delay that's been put in there. If I wanted to change the calendar at any time, I can select, say, that task there, go to general, and just change the uh, calendar to the synchronous produced earlier. If you want any new new task you create to be by that synchro one, I just need to change it up here in the drop down box to synchro like that. Okay, now I'm going to turn off the automatic rescheduling. So I go to tools options. Select the Gantt chart again, rescheduling, and just disable that option, and select OK. I'm going to put the second um, work breakdown task underneath piling, so I can just select piling, and then say below, and that will appear there, and this will be superstructure. Correct task underneath that, Oops. and then. I'm going to indent it this time. 
change the name of that to level zero. Add the child underneath that one and call this one slab one, slab zero. Select the task, select below, and columns, zero. Below that one, and beams, zero. I'm going to right click on this level zero here, and say copy tasks. Select that there, right click, and then paste tasks. And I can then just quickly change the names of these to level one, slab one, columns one, and beams one. I just need to indent that. And again, and again. So that's on the main level. So we've quickly produced that that's the first level. Okay, I'm just going to give the duration for these, so I'm just going to give three days for each, just for this example. Oops, and copy that down. Maybe the second floor will be different. First floor, sorry. And you'll notice now, because I've got the automatic view scheduling off, when I select the first one, last one, go to link them as a chain, you can see it's put the link in there, but it hasn't actually rescheduled them yet and we get this message here saying there are unsustainable links which means these haven't been linked there's been linked but they actually haven't been rescheduled yet you'll notice those will pop into the alerts now and it just tells you that there's something up with those links there if I want to uh, manually reschedule if I just press F9 on the keyboard I can do now you can see that it's manually updated so the same with the next for level one Select them, link in a chain, and then press F9, and that reschedules. And now I'm just going to link these subtasks here. So I could say, can roll this up, piling and the superstructure. Oops. Hold down control, superstructure. I'm going to link those together and finish to start. Press F9. You can see how this is building up. Level zero, and then select level one link in the chain, press F9 and that reschedules like that there. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to make some new tasks underneath this here. So I select level one and then select below, I'll call that level 2 Okay. Shows you how to link where you actually select the first one, then the next one, and then hit this link task in a chain. You can actually do it off the uh, off the Gantt chart bars. If I select slab two, select the bar in the centre, and if I move to the right hand side, you can see it turns into a little paper clip. Hold down the left button, and then I can move that. You can see it snaps, and that tells me what type of link it is. If I want it to finish the start. I'll take it to there, then let go, we'll reschedule, and this hasn't been linked to anything before, and we see that's rescheduled there, I'll just link level 1 to level 2, you notice as well that the uh, predecessors and successors have been populated, we can do the link